Hi everyone, my name is Megan and I work for the Thompson Nicola Invasive Plant Management Committee. We work towards protecting environmental, economic, and social values being impacted by invasive plants within the Thompson Nicola region. Today I will be talking about hay and the invasive species that could be present in yours. You will learn how invasive species impact your livestock and ways that you can help to prevent their introduction and spread. Let's start out by defining what an invasive plant is. An invasive plant is a non-native plant whose introduction causes economic, social, and environmental damage. Hay is one of the several pathways for movement of invasive plants throughout the Thompson Nicola region and beyond. When invasive plants invade hay fields, it results in decreased yields and reduced quality. Some invasive plants are harmful to livestock when consumed and can lead to acute or chronic toxicity. Although many livestock prefer desirable plants and avoid the less palatable invasive plants, when hayfields or pastures are heavily invaded, livestock are forced to eat the potentially toxic invasive plants. Let's go over a few examples of invasive plants that are toxic to livestock. This invader is called horealism and it causes edema in horses. If ingested, symptoms like swelling of the lower legs, warm hooves, fever, diarrhea, stiffness of joints, and the reluctance to move are common. Hay containing 20% or more of horealism should not be fed to horses. Hound's tongue is another toxic invasive plant. This plant impacts the central nervous system and liver in cattle and horses. Symptoms in cattle include staring, diarrhea, increased thirst, nervousness, and a drop in milk yield. In horses, nervousness, rapid breathing, depression, diarrhea, blood and urine, and yellow pigmentation of skin are common symptoms. This plant is the most toxic in its rosette stage, as this is when the concentration of the various alkaloids is highest. Hound's tongue produces burr-like seeds that easily stick to livestock and clothing. These burrs can get embedded in animals' eyes, causing damage and reducing their overall health and value. Now that you can identify a couple of toxic invasive plant species, let's go over what you should do if you witness your livestock consuming a toxic plant. Carefully pull the remaining plant material out of the animal's mouth and place it in a bag. Don't forget to wash your hands immediately. Contact a veterinarian immediately and send them a photo of the plant for identification. Do your best to estimate how much of the plant was eaten, what part of the plant was eaten, and if the plant was fresh or dried. Do not try to induce vomiting or give any medications as this can do more harm than good. The good news is that you can take simple actions that can help prevent the spread of invasive species to avoid harming your livestock and hay fields. Let's go over some of these actions that hay consumers can take. Hay consumers should learn how to identify invasive plants and know which ones are toxic. You should also purchase locally sourced hay from a credible producer. Ask your producer what invasive plants they have in their fields or walk the field and take a look for invasives prior to harvest. If you have toxic invasive plants in your pasture, consider temporarily fencing off the infested areas to prevent accidental ingestion until the infestation can be managed. Isolate and label contaminated hay. Store it away from animals that are sensitive to its toxicity. Do not overgraze your pastures. Practice rotation to allow desirable plant recovery. A good rotation schedule is to move livestock to another field when desirable plants have been reduced to 3 to 4 inches. Now let's go over some actions that hay producers can take. Invasive plants are often a symptom of poor land management programs. If you're a hay producer, keep your fields healthy and invasive plant free by following these practices. Seed bare spots in your fields. This reduces the available habitat for invaders and improves hay production. Make sure you are buying certified seed. Maintain healthy soils for optimal hay production. This includes testing your soils for nutrient content, composition, pH, and other characteristics and amend as needed. Monitor your fields for invasive plants regularly. Identify and mark infested hay bales so they are not moved off the field. Manage your invasive plants prior to cutting your hay. Thanks for watching. For a PDF copy of the What's in Your Hay brochure, visit tnipmc.com and go to educational resources. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact us at 1-877-377-8800.
8673 or by emailing invasiveplants at tnrd.ca.